Hello. Cheers. Who's out there? Anybody just watched my live stream on Just the Way You Are? Billy Joel? I was almost not going to do the Old Lang Syne live stream because I've been teaching since 9 o'clock this morning. But I'm trying to stay to my commitments. So. Anybody out there? Type in the chat. If nobody types in the chat within one minute, or no, not even one minute, 10 seconds, and I'll <laughs> cancel it. Type in the chat if you're out there. Tell me who you are. You got 10 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. It's the final countdown. 4. Yukon. Okay, I'll do it. I was just making sure somebody's out there watching. Cheers. Thanks for joining, Yukon. Anybody else out there? You ready to talk some chord theory, chord melody, chord reharmonization on Auld Lang Syne? Uh, I put a PDF on Patreon. I like that. That's very optimistic. Yeah, you can you didn't catch my live stream on just the way you are, huh? I just did Billy Joel's just the way you are. Process video is an hour and eight minutes long. So I'm gonna make this one probably a little bit short, probably less than an hour. Okay. Um oh you missed it. Pretty good lesson. I just learned the whole song myself. <laughs> so and so that's why it's a process video, because I'm showing how I would learn a song in con the considerations. So right now, I'm going to go over um, Old Lang Syne in the easy key of G. You've got the PDF that, that there's a link for in the description. It just looks like this, key of G, super, super easy, OK? And I'm just going to leave this video up for today as well. These videos get archived on Patreon and on YouTube members. Um, but uh, I think this song deserves some love during this time of the year um, since it should be played because it's tradition. So we have Key of G. Check this out. music don't look at the music all on one string okay except for the pickup note should all the acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind okay so um we got g should all the acquaintance be D, we're in the key of G, so it's one, five, one, for God and G. I would put a G7 here. It doesn't say that, but we want those secondary dominants. Many of you already know what I said. Yeah, the, the, get the PDF in the description. I'm not going to keep holding it up. Just grab it from the PDF, uh, and the link is in the description. Um, and it's free. So one, when I, I always say this, when the one turns to dominant, where does it want to go? Yukon, where does it go? Where does the one, when the one turns to dominant, that pulls us to what chord number? Very, very important to know this. The four, see? Thanks, Yukon. So turn that, it doesn't show it on the chart, but this is the first substitute I'm going to do. One to the four. Put that dominant seven like this and then back to the one should all acquaintance be forgotten gotta get that b7 for its money secondary dominance and that all falls under this 
and this is how Barry Harris got his diminished concept right here from that D7 to the B7's relationship of the third. D7, B7. Because you can use the same dim seven. You, you jazzers know what I'm talking about. And then C major. Days of old lang syne. So we're in the key of G. We got the one, five. Back to the one. Turn that to dominant. Pull this to the four. B7 and talking about jamming having fun with all Lang Syne I'm just goofing around with chords one five one turn that one to dominant do the four back to the one five five the six four five one one Back to the one, five, five of the six. You gotta get that movement there. But there's something really hip that we can do. Hi, Jeffrey, good to see you again. Just do that, just go D7, D sharp dim. That's what I'm saying is that's the dim seven sub that you jazzers all know about. And then instead of C major, go to E minor, the six. Sounds a little bit more sentimental and bittersweet. Got it? One, five. One, one dominant to the four. Back to the one, five. Get that diminish. Two, five, one. So what I did there, the very end there, I know it just says D7. But I put a two, five, instead of C major, D, two, five, one. So I'm jazzing it up a little bit. So let's talk about this, how to jazz up this chord progression. Uh, by the way, if you guys are just tuning in, we're getting some people, Yukon, you had faith. I had faith too. I just was goofing around, being dramatic. Uh, so we're looking at this lead sheet. Key of G, we all love G guitar players. We all love our G chords. Yeah, G. All right, so we're going to jazz it up. So we already did our little funky rock version of it. But actually, let's do it again. One, five. One, one dominant, four. That's how easy this song is, okay, to memorize it. Don't just rely on sheet music, even though it's for free and it's right there in the description. Grab it so that you can see and learn it this way with me. One, five, five of the six. And instead of going to the four, go to the three or six. Sounds a little bit more bittersweet. And then two, five, one, two, here we go. One, five. One, one dominant to the four. Back to the one, five. Let's do the diminished sub for the B7, and then your choice, C or E minor. I like the E minor, and then D7. Again. Okay, so 
So now let's talk chord melody. How do we come up with a chord melody? Well, I'm going to talk about a few more substitutions in the process. So we got the G. We could do G triad. We could do G major seven. We could do G six nine. This is going to get a little bit jazzy here, you guys. So G six nine. Now, it says just G for full measure, but I, I know that G major seven can go to G six. So on the second half of the measure, I'm going to go to E minor seven. And that's where we get these jazz chord movements, one, six, two, five, the most common jazz progression. So we have this G major seven, E minor seven. Now it says, it, it says D7 on the paper, but as a jazz player, I know I could put an A minor seven in front of that to create movement. Then go to D7 and then back to G. So just right there, this is what we have. One, six, two, five. We love 165. Check it out. One, six, two, five, one. Okay. Let's do that again. G major seven, E minor seven. The melody is right there in these shapes. You don't have to do anything, just pluck the right string. E mi A minor seven. Get that note though, that's a D13. And then G. Now G7, C major 7. You can get the bass B fancy. But G, G7, G7, C major 7. See how nice that is? So again, we're jazzing it up. Instead of just G, D7, G, G7, C, we're going G major 7, E minor 7, A minor 7, D7, G, G7, C, major 7. Back to G. Now I'm doing G6, 9. I might just do G major 7. Now, check this out. It says D7, B7. See where it says D7, B7 here? I'm thinking, what can I put in front of the D7 to make it, give it more movement? Thanks, James. Good to see you again. In front of D7, you can put A minor 7. And in front of the B7, James, I'm going to ask you, what chord can you put in front of the B7 to give it that movement, the jazz movement that we want? What chord? What goes in front of B dominant 7? So here's B7, but in front of that, we put the two chord, F sharp minor seven flat five, because it's gonna go to E minor. This is a reharmonization of it. So you can go A minor seven, D7, F sharp minor seven flat five, B7, E minor, and then two, five, one. That's it, two. Five, then the six, quick change, two, five, one. So we can do all our favorite jazz chord progressions here. Slowly, G major seven, E minor seven, A minor seven, D seven, D 13, G major seven, G seven, C major seven, G six, nine, E minor seven, that's one six. And then here comes a fancy two five. Let's do it again. G7, 
Sir. Sir. Fui a oraciones. That was the E minor 7. A minor. A half dim. I want to do one thing here on that um, G7 chord. I want to put um, F in the bass. So here's G. Put F in the bass. We did this the other day on Stevie Wonder's Isn't She Lovely as a second chord. You do it like this. I like it here. Triad. Put F in the bass. And then the C major 7. Let's put the E in the bass. It gives it a little darker vibe to it. So check it out now if we do chord melody. Sweet. G69. Or maybe like this, just G major. E minor 7. Quick change. D7. F sharp half to 2 5. A lot of 2 5 ones. Let's keep going. Got it? Let's do it again. One, six, two, five, one, dominant to the four. One, six, I would put F sharp half dim, B7, E minor. exploring <laughs> there's an air but I just keep going one six two five I'm just gonna keep going till I just really screw it up one six two five to the six There you go. There's our jazz arrangement for Old Lang Syne. 
we started really simple, really basic, jazz it up. We can even take it to another level and add more diminished chords, more passing chords, um, some borrowed chords, some minor. Baseline movement, you know, those are all things to consider um, when coming up with an arrangement. So I'll make this one short and sweet. Hopefully that will keep you guys busy at learning this one for the new year. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you all next time. Cheers.